Give Captain Gunny a proper eye eye. I followed Captain Gunny as he led me down the path and up the hill not far from Star House. I'd only been gone from my new friends for 15 minutes and I already missed them. Kind of wish I could stay for a few more days, even though I'm needed back in New Pegasus. At least long enough to meet Blackjack. From the stories I was told, she seems like an interesting pony to know. Maybe she could teach me a thing or two. Though, maybe not. I was just starting to wonder that. Um, what the trip back to New Pegasus was going to be like, and what to expect when I got back. When Captain Gunny said from up the path, Ah, old Captain Gunny has never rider where he's left that blasted airship. Was it on the left fork or the right? Uh, what's that quagmire of a problem there? I walked up next to the older buck, seeing two paths that forked on either side, asking him, You can't remember where you left your ship? Didn't you just leave it half an hour ago? He looked over at me, the slow match cords of his hat glowing a dull red, making his face look like it was slightly demonic. He smiled, saying, Of course, Captain Gunny remembers where he left his ship. Just can't quite remember which path were taken. He studied the paths, saying, Of course he could have come from the right path, but Gunny likes to throw off his chaser as he does. Maybe it was the left, and he just wanted to make sure even Gunny couldn't follow himself back. I started the old earth path as well, then noticed the paths myself. It only took a moment to see the slight hoof prints on the left path. Smiling to myself, I pointed at them. Looks like you came from the left path. He looked down at that, then frowned, followed by a moment later with a smile and a chuckle. Course he did, ah, course. He rubbed his chin. I was testing ya, young star. See if she's paying attentions. Why would you care how I was paying attention? Aren't you the captain? I asked. He started down the left path. Course, Gunny's the captain. He ain't no navigator, though. Nah, that job will fall to you. Me? I don't know the first thing about navigation. Hell, I don't even know the area. Don't you have a navigator already? I asked in shock. That gun he did. Sadly, like, he came down with a nasty case of napping right on Gunny's bed. Drooled all over Gunny's pillows more than once. Three times he did. Had to toss him overboard. Gunny said with a chuckle. So you killed him for drooling on your pillows? I asked. Nah, Gunny didn't kill him. All he did was throw him off the ship. It was only a ten meter drop. Broke his legs, the fool. Started screaming like some pony popped his bum cherry with a metal poker. Or something like that. It would have been fine apart from his broken bones. Hoovesies and some pain. But no, the fool had to scream. Right in the middle of Hellhound territory, too. Gunny said with a chuckle. So you threw him off your ship? He broke his legs and was killed by hellhounds? I asked, very confused by his strange way of talking. Nope, he would have. But the nasty pups didn't make it to him in time. Nope, a rad scorpion popped up out of nowhere and got to him first. Sad lot to watch. At least the angry pups would have killed him quick like. Rad scorpions like to take their time. He said and then stopped and shivered. A lot like spiders. Never liked spiders. Too many legs and all that. Like, straight out of Captain's Gun in Nightmares. Deciding that continuing this particular conversation was getting us nowhere, I changed the subject. Mostly. I still don't know how I'm going to navigate for you. He laughed again. Don't be worrying about that. Gunny never lets his crew go without help. Can't be having a rook doing things all wishy-washy sideways now, can he? Sunspot can teach you. She was going to be Gunny's new navigator, but she moved up to first mate. Good girl, if a little strange. How many do you have on your crew? I asked. Counting you? Three. The twins do a good job with the plundering and looting. Sunspot is the smarter one of them. He said. Twins? 
I asked. Gunny doesn't feel like explaining. You'll understand, he said. We reached the top of the small hill looking over a meadow, and my eyes went wide. Sitting in the middle of the meadow was a ship like nothing I'd ever seen before, which I guess wasn't saying much. I hadn't seen many airships in my life, even when I was a foal and still lived in Enclave territory. The ship was made of wood, with metal armor placed on its outer hull. In the front, there was a long ram covered in thick steel plating. At the back of the ship, there were two huge machines that looked like little rockets, though I couldn't be sure. Hovering over the ship was what could only be called a balloon or something that looked like one. Whatever it was, it looked like that's what helped keep the ship in the air. On the deck, I could see six energy weapons so massive that I knew they had to be powerful. Three on each side of the ship made it so they could fire on oncoming enemies. At the front deck, another massive energy weapon was mounted on a swivel. Last, at the back, two more energy weapons were poking out. As we started walking closer to the ship, flying boat, I had no idea what to call it. I saw that Bitter Cobb was written on two gold-encrusted plates in green paint at the front, mirroring each other. Ain't she beautiful? Gunny asked. I sounded like a father talking about his filly who had just won some kind of prize. I've never seen anything like it, I said, captivated by the machine. Gunny turned around so fast I almost fell over him, surprised. The Bitter Cobb ain't a... Uh, in it, she's a she. Don't ya ponies in the west flanks of this butthole wasteland know that much? Learn your pronouns. I'm sorry, Captain Gunny. I had no idea. Never been around a ship before, I said. Also, don't you mean pronouns? He glared at me for a long moment, then finally sighed and said, Of course not. Gunny should have known, desert folk you be. And that's what Gunny said. Pronouns. Get your hearings, Fade. You mean desert? I said automatically. Tis weren't Gunny said, isn't it? He asked. You said dessert? You know, like cake or something like it? I said. Ah, that'd be true. Good lass you be, star shine. He said with a chuckle. Shadow Star, sir, I said as he started leading me back to the bitter cob. Ah, that's right. Shadow Shine. Forgot already. Never been good with names, Gun, he hasn't, he said. I was about to correct him again when I just shook my head. Just call me Shadow. Will that work? Yes, so. Though if you want, Gun could give you a proper private name. Something good like Swill or Rum Runner. You know what Gunny means. Some that I strike fear into them souls of ponies, he said with a laugh. Both names were nowhere near good, but I wasn't going to tell him that. Instead, I replied, I think Shadow would be fine. A lot of ponies are scared of the dark or shadowy places. He laughed. Ah, you be right there. Guess you get to keep your prissy pony name, then. Gunny thinks rum still sounds better. No. I said sternly. Are you be no fun, Shadow? He laughed heartily. Ah, look. Gunny's crew be awaiting for him at the top of the gangplank. I looked up the ramp that led up to the deck of the ship and stopped. Standing there were two identical creatures. Creatures I'd never seen or heard of in my life. Though they looked to be close to ponies, I may have been imagining it. They also didn't look like ponies at the same time. It was almost like somebody had taken a griffin and a pony and smashed them into one. They both had the head and mane of a pony. One looked more feminine than the other, but not by much. Their bodies had an off-white color to it, with a lighter maroon color to their manes. Both of them had two different color eyes. One was green, the other was blue. But oddly, the only thing different about them was that the one looked more feminine green eye was on the right, and the blue on the left. The other had its blue eye on the right, and the green on its left. Their ears had tufts on the end, which would make Wind Thrasher or Laser Light jealous. Each white ear ended in a maroon tuft that matched the mane. Now, as I looked down, I saw that they had no 
they had paws, not hoofs on their four legs. In the back, they had normal pony hooves. Going down their backs was a dark redwood color that followed all the way up to their lion tails. The puffy end was also maroon, matching their mane. Last was their wings. They weren't as big as Aura's, but a lot bigger than a Pegasus would have. The wings matched their coat perfectly. I took a step back, unsure of what was going on. The one on the right of me spoke in a normal pony speech, an accent that reminded me of a lot of the ponies who grew up in New Pegasus, or around it. Captain Gunny, I'm glad you're back. We heard gunfire and thought something might have happened to you. It sounded feminine. Nothing Captain Gunny can't deal with. A few enclave feather brains thought they could take a pop or two at the young unicorn. Showed him why you don't mess with Gunny. He said with a laugh, then turned to me as the two, whatever they were, came down the plank. Shadow, this be Sunspot and... Ah, uh, all right, Elmer. The other creature, who sounded male, replied, Elliot, Captain, we've been over this. Just because you're crazy doesn't mean you can call me whatever you want. Gunny laughed. Betch be watching your tone with your captain now, Elmer. Elliot, you know what old Gunny means. Also, Captain Gunny ain't crazy. He's mad. There's a difference. The male creature rolled his eyes. Sure there is. Anyway, I take it this is Shadowstar, our passenger. Yeah, that's me. What are you two, by the way? You look like a weird cross between a griffin and a pony? I asked, a little confused by their appearances. The female, Sunspot, looked like she was going to answer when Gunny cut in. There be a time for talking and such, and we're past it. When we're cast off, you can talk. He looked back at the twins, saying, You two, there's four pegasi up the road with holes in their noggins. Go collect them. Promise the ponies there that. Captain Gunny would send a clean-up crew. They both saluted, saluted, saying, Yes, sir. Sir? Sir? What kind of pirates are ye? Give Captain Gunny a proper aye-aye, Gunny said. Aye-aye, Captain, they said in unison, then opened their wings and they were off. So you met the twins. At least you didn't scream when you met them. Gunny sure did. Creepy-looking folk to be he said, heading back up the plank and onto his ship before looking back at me. Now just stand there like a poxy bum boy. I got to show you around the bitter cob. Sighing again, I followed the not-crazy-but-mad pony onto his ship. Once I was on deck, he took me on a tour. As he walked around, he said, The bitter cob's a beauty and one of a kind nowadays. Gunny will show you how things work on Gunny's ship, and where you'd be sleeping. Normally, Gunny would keep you in the cargo hold, but there'd be a lot of things Bottle wants to take it here or there. I did my best to follow his speech while he followed me around. As we walked, I learned more about ships than I ever thought I would. I learned that you didn't say left or right on a ship, but it was part and starboard. Gunny explained, in his own way, that they were a fixed position on a ship, no matter which way some pony was facing. If you were at the back, or stern, I guess, of the ship, and facing what Gunny called forward, the port was on the left, and the starboard was on the right. If you were on the bow, or front of the ship, and looking at the back, also, the starboard was now on your left, and the port was on your right. He explained that it kept the crew knowing where the enemy was. He told me that even an airship, be it the Enclave's form of an airship or this one, that was the way the crew learned how to navigate. He said it was how sailors used it a long time ago, before airships were around. I got to see the forecastle as well, which was where the crew slept. This ship only had three rooms. One was Captain Gunny's room, which was the biggest, then two on each side for the twins. I guess they didn't sleep in the same room. I found it odd, because from what I heard about twins, they always liked to be together. Maybe it was because of gender. 
If I had a brother of my age, I wouldn't want him sleeping in my room anymore, even if we were close. Gunny pointed a hoof at the room on the porch side, saying, There be your room, Shadow. You'll be bunking with on the spot. I heard two sets of wings, and a second later, followed by two bodies landing on the deck just outside the small hallway that led to the rooms, followed by Sponspo Sunspot saying, Captain, we've disposed of the bodies and took their gear. Ah, good. It's time to be casting off, then, Gunny said with a wry chuckle. Sunspot, Shadow will be bunking with you. You can show her the ropes with navigation and all that. Hi, Captain, Sunspot said as she looked over at me and smiled. Don't worry, I have no space for the two of us in there. Elliot chuckled. Careful, she snores. Do not, Sunspot said, looking offended. You snore. Now get the ship ready for casting. Gunny's got a schedule to keep and what not. Aye, aye, they both said, moving to the other parts of the ship. Sunspot looked back at me, since I hadn't moved from where I was standing a moment ago. Gave me another smile. Here, kid, come with me. You're going to love this. I followed her, asking, what's going to happen? Oh, you'll see. This ship is quite the experience. There is none like it anymore, she said as she moved to go stand next to the wheel. I noticed that apart from the wheel, there were a few levers and a panel on her right, and a terminal on her left. She fiddled with something on the terminal, then yelled, Captain Gunny, ready to fire rear thrusters. First mate, did you check the gems connection? Gunny said. He was standing a few feet away, watching as Elliot messed with something on the front of the ship. Full power to the thrusters. Same for the anti-grav engines. The support balloon is stable and ready to lift. Our guns are running at 97%, though. Sunspot said as she checked the terminal. Raider and EFS Scrambler is powered and running perfectly, Elliot said from the front. Ah, Captain Gunny loves how good his crew be. Good job. Now, let's take to the sky, he said with a barking laugh. Sunspot grinned like mad, whatever she was, and then looked at me. You might want to hold on to something. Unsure what she meant by that, I dove for a rope that was connected to the big balloon-like device over us, and held on tight with my forelegs right as soon as Sunspot took hold of the lever and rammed it forward. For a second, nothing happened. All I could hear was a small humming coming from under us. Also, it felt like the ship was slowly lifting into the air. I looked around and saw that they were slowly lifting off the ground. Then, three things happened at once. First, my EFS started to go haywire in my vision. Then, the ship tilted its nose upward, and with a loud boom, the bitter cob exploded into the sky. I screamed as I felt my hooves slipping slowly from the rope as the force of the jump almost tore me from the line. It only lasted a moment, though. Soon, the ship leveled off and the force on my body eased a little. I waited a moment until I was sure nothing was going to force me off the ship before I let go of the rope and got back to my hooves looking around. Sunspot looked over to see me looking around, and she smiled again. Sorry for the quick jump like that. That is the best way to keep the Enclave from noticing us. I shook my head, then brought the Mark II up and turned off the EFS. All I was doing right now was making my head hurt as lines of red were mixed around with whites and zigzags ran across my vision. I looked over at her, asking, What was that all about? And what'd you do to my EFS? Elliot came up to us, saying, We have tech on here that keeps us from being noticed by the Enclave's radar, and it can crumble the EFS in power armor, too. Sorry, but while we're in the air, you won't be able to use yours. Same for sats. Both spells won't work up here now. Makes sense. But next time, can you warn me? Also, what do you do if a passing airship sees you? I asked. Captain Gunny laughed. That's what the cannons are for. The Captain Gunny don't see many enclave ships below the clouds. What about Pegasi? I asked. Them too, he said with a mad nod. Sunspot, let old Gunny take the wheel for a bit. Why don't you go get Shadow up to quick now? You mean up to speed? I said. We are up to speed, and I'll be gone with you. 
Gunny said, shooing her away from the wheel. Hi, sir, she said, rolling her eyes and giggling. She looked over at me and nodded her head down towards the main deck. Follow me, kid. I did as she asked as she led me down to the main deck. We walked for a minute or two before I asked. So, can you explain to me what you are? She looked down at me, her smile fading a little, saying, That's a hard answer, Shadow. The better question would be what I used to be, because now I have no idea what I am. It's no known word for the creatures Elliot and I are now. I cocked an eyebrow at her, asking, What you used to be? You mean you weren't born like this? She shook her head, saying, Haven't you noticed that I have a pony's name and Elliot has a griffin name? I did notice that. I just figured your parents had some weird sense of humor, I said. She laughed a little. Well, not in the sense you're thinking. Elliot and I aren't really twins. Not in the normal way, at least. During the war, I was Wing Commander, first class of the Dashers, a small group that was part of the Shadowbolts. Elliot was a contract griffin who worked for the Dashers on most of our big missions. We became best friends over time and still are. I stopped on my tracks, saying, Whoa, hold up a second. You're telling me you were around since the war? There's no way that's possible. You'd be over 200 years old. She looked back at me and smiled again. I am, though it's not because I'm special or anything like that. Until a couple months ago, Elliot and I were in stasis pods. We were placed in there as part of a project called Chimera. That name sparked something in my memories from the last few days I spent talking to Scotch. I've heard about that project before. A filly I met in chapel said some ghoul, I can't remember his name, but some ghoul led a lot of monsters out of their pods. So you're one of them? She nodded again. I am. So was Elliot. We were one of the first he let out that were part of Project Chimera. We were also one of the first he mostly successful objects from that project. You see, during a battle near Hoofington, we encountered a dragon. A massive old dragon. I was badly hurt during that fight and almost died. Elliot wasn't much better. We were both pronounced as dead in the line of duty, but what really happened is that we were both taken to a secret location. Our wounds were mostly healed by the doctors there. Once we were healthy enough, they placed us into pods. Turned out they wanted to use us to make one mixed creature, but something went wrong. When they activated the mega spell, only half of our DNA was pulled away. The pony tried to shut down the experiment to realign our DNA, but what happened was that our DNA went to the other. It turned us into what you see now. We are technically identical twins now, apart from our gender. I'm surprised that either of you survived that, I said. So were the doctors. At first, they thought it would be good for Equestria. They thought they could use us to fight the zebras. But things didn't go according to plan. When we woke up a couple of days later, neither of us could deal with what happened to us. And we attacked our caretakers. We both tried to escape and killed a few ponies in the attempt, but sadly we didn't make it out. We were placed into cells for study a couple of months, and once it was determined that we wouldn't do what they wanted us to do, they placed us into the pods. We woke up over 200 years later to find our home destroyed and a nutcase ghoul wanted us to work for him, Sunspot said. Let me guess. Both of you didn't want anything to do with that? I said. Got that right. Ellie and I managed to escape, at least for a little while. The other ponies he let out did track us down a week or so later and tried to force us to go back. But luckily for us, Captain Gunny showed up and helped us escape. We've been working with him ever since, she said. So you became Sky Pirates, I said. I guess there's worse career choices. It's not as bad as it sounds. Gunny does do a lot of things a pirate would, but only goes after the Enclave or slavers and ponies like that. He's a few bullets short of a clip, but deep down he's a good pony, a sunspot said, leading me back to the front of the ship. So, if you were around during the war, did you ever meet a pony named Night Stalker? I asked. She looked at me. I've heard of him, but I can't say much about who he was. All I know is that he was one of Princess Luna's personal guards. I saw him once at the Grand Galloping Gala. I heard rumors about him, too. But, like I said, he wasn't well known when I was still fighting. When did your accident happen? 
I asked. About three weeks after the gala, she replied. If I read when the bombs fell, it would have been about five years before the end. Oh, that's why then? He wasn't a well-known pony yet, I said. Only other time I heard anything about him was, apart from rumors, was when my friend Cloudy Knight said something about joining Night Stalker's new guard unit. She said with a shrug. Wait, you knew Cloudy Knights? I asked, a little surprised. She nodded. Yeah, she was my trainer during boot camp. She used to date my old brother, Silver Hooves, back when she went by a different name, until he died during the Battle of Hoofington. I sat down and leaned against the wall. So you knew her when she was still going by Pink Rose? She sat down next to me and gave me a curious look. Most ponies don't know that name. She changed it when she was still a young mare. When I first left my stable, I hid in a bunker under an old shack and found her diary and a recording. I've also seen her in a memory orb or two. She worked with Night Stalker's team during the war, and I've wanted to know more about her ever since I read what happened to her, I said. Sunspot laid her head against the rail and laughed. She used to be so full of fire and happy as hell when she was still with my brother. After he died, though, she got hard and distrustful of ponies. When she was our instructor in boot camp, she wasn't anything like the mare I knew when I was still a filly. I'm not surprised, honestly. Lizzie, some pony you love is hard, I said, looking up at the clouds that were only a few meters above us. What was boot camp like for you, if you don't mind me asking? She shrugged. Hard, but also fun. We only had about eight in our group, a mix of Pegasi and Earth ponies. Well, myself and one of the Pegasus, I should say. The rest were Earth ponies. Was this the Shadow Bolts training? I asked. She shook her head. No, that was later. I wanted to learn how to fight like the Earth ponies did before I did flight training. Cloudy Nights was our trainer for both, but she worked with Big Mac on the Earth pony training. Big Mac? I asked. I saw in a memory orb once, too. She smiled and nodded. Yeah, he was a kind stallion, but also tough as nails. He took great interest in the other Pegasus in the group and helped him toughen up a lot, but he always had time for us all if we needed him. She looked down at her paws and I could see sadness in her eyes. It was a sad day when he died. Who was the other Pegasus? I asked, mostly because I just wanted something to talk about. She scratched her chin for a moment thinking back. You know, I can't remember his name, but he was kind of a coward at first. Took a while for him to catch up to the rest of us, even when he pushed through. I think his griffin friend, who kept visiting from another group, helped with that. I remember her more. It wasn't every day you saw a griffin fighting for Equestria, not as a merc. An idea came back to me, so I looked back at her. Hey, Sunspot? Would it be weird if I asked you if I could look at one of your memories? She blinked, then gave me a funny look. And that's a strange request. Why do you want to look at my memories? Mostly because I want to try out a new spell I learned. But also, I want to see if this other Pegasus is the same one I'm thinking of. She took a moment to think about it, then shrugged. Captain won't be needing us for a little while, so I guess it's okay. Wait, if you learned this spell just now, how dangerous is it if it's your first time? I'll be gentle, and I know I can do the spell without hurting you, as long as you're letting me view the memory. If you try and fight me while I'm in there, then we might have problems, I said. She took another moment to think, then said, Fine, but let's go to my room first. I don't want Elliot or Gunny to do something to us when they think it's funny while you're doing the spell. It shouldn't take long, but that's fine with me, I said, getting up. She led me back to the room we'd be sharing over this voyage and shut the door. She laid down on her bed and said, Okay, I'm ready, I guess. What do I need to do? Just think about boob camp, then relax and don't fight the spell, I said. Okay, I'll try my best, she said, closing her eyes. Okay, ready. I took a deep breath and called my magic. Once I had a hold of the magic, I wrapped it around Silverspot's head. Once that was done, I activated the spell. I gasped as my own mind seemed to flow into sunspots. A bright light came forth and I was swallowed by the memory.